This is Speaking of Shakespeare, conversations about things Shakespearean. I'm Thomas Dabbs, broadcasting from Aoyama Gakuin University in central Tokyo. This talk is with Shoichiro Kawai, professor of Shakespeare at the University of Tokyo, and will focus on his innovative work as a director and a playwright, and his many contributions to Shakespearean translation and scholarship. If you are joining us on YouTube and wish to listen to this program as a podcast, you may click the link below to your favorite podcast platform. If you are joining us via a podcast and wish to watch this program, we are available on YouTube under the search term, Speaking of Shakespeare. This series is funded with institutional support from Aoya Magakuin University, and also with a generous grant from the Japan Society for the Promotion of Science. Professor Kawai, I finally got you on the program. Thank you so much for Thank joining you. us today. Thank you for you having are, me. You are so nice busy. To see you, Tom. Well, it's great to see you. I miss seeing you at the Shakespeare Society conference. We had to be online this year. Yes, we have been online. Yes. Yeah. And uh, so that was uh, and that was a, a missed opportunity. We still had uh, the ability to, to go to yes. papers, but it's just yes. not the same, is it, uh, as meeting with. Yes, I really appreciated your paper read at the conference. It was oh, well, great. Yes. Thank you. Yes. You know, it's so odd. Uh, we could go on about this, but I won't. But it's so odd on Zoom uh, reading a paper to avatars. You know, and uh -huh. I think a, yeah. a lot of uh, viewers of this program will have had mm. the same experience doing mm. that and teaching. Um, but what I, I wanted to start out and talk about what I saw in an article about uh, an inter another interview of you. And it's about the Holy Trinity of being a Shakespearean. Okay. And I think I'm right, and you can correct me, but first now, I think first is playwright directing mm -hmm. and uh, number two, translation and translation theory that we'll get to. Mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. very eager to talk with you about that. Okay. And uh, also research and scholarship mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, the uh, focus on uh, globalizing Shakespeare and Shakespearean adaptation. Right. So I'm going to go up at the top playwright director. Mm. I had the joy of attending one of your productions oh yes thank uh, you for coming you're you're <laughs> thank you for inviting me that was just yes. wonderful uh yes. waiting for will yes which you know you think oh, about you it you have a little uh poster yes, I there have i have it right, right here yeah right here uh, thank you it's a great memory you know during a time where we haven't assembled many good memories of a public mm -hmm. performance and mm -hmm. uh and conferences and so forth mm -hmm. and so it's right behind me i love yes. that performance thank you and, That's based uh, on the Waiting for Godot by Samuel Beckett. Yeah, yeah. And we changed the Godot into Will, which of course signifies uh, somebody. <laughs> and also somebody we know, yeah. yeah. somebody we are going to talk about. But And uh, I have put uh, the famous line from all the 40 plays of Shakespeare into that short play. So if you watch that Waiting for Will, you can you can just uh, remember the each uh, famous lines from all the Shakespearean plays in a, one production. I I did, and I was uh, joking with a, a friend of mine, a colleague of mine today, and talking about how my reaction was a little bit slower because most of the audience was Japanese, um, and I think most of the audience was fairly uh, well. Uh, versed in reading Shakespeare, at least mm -hmm. in Japanese translation. Uh, right, right. So I would hear some laughter and then I would think about it. Th and so I was about s 10 seconds late <laughs> because I had to remember the line from Shakespeare and then the Japanese, yeah, you know, the key words. <laughs> yeah. And then yes. translate it all in my head and then get right. the joke. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was fabulous. I, I had no idea. I knew that there probably was an allusion to Beckett in mm -hmm. the title right mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it was a beckett-esque performance yes, beckett -esque, yes. uh it was it was everything I'll, I'll tell you a story in just a moment but those actors were fabulous yes uh and where did they come from well one yes. is from uh gekidan shiki and uh he was uh the the, the first uh, he was in a ca first cast of the uh the the, 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 the les miserables in in japan that's in there was a first production in back in 
in, in decades, and he was in the original cast. And uh, he was also a, a, a actor who worked with Ninagawa-san in, uh, in, in, in his Shakespearean series. And so he's, uh, well, no, he was the founder of the Shakespearean theater in Japan. And uh, the first uh, Shakespearean uh, translator, Odashima Yushi, who is the first to complete the whole work, as well as uh, producing the plays on the stage. I mean, he, he, he translated the plays for the director Deguchi Norio. Yes. And, and the Deguchi san produced all the Shakespearean 37 yes. plays. The Jean Jean Theater. Jean Jean Theater. Yeah. And uh, that Tashiro san was the, the cast there. He was the, the founding member of the company. So he, wow. So it's, it's natural that he is very much versed in all the Shakespearean plays. So there, there are several plays that he hasn't played yet. But almost all he knew by heart. <laughs> well, that was yeah. it for our viewer listeners. The Jean Jean Theater, uh, mm. that was uh, the uh, De Gucci, mm. famously now, it was yep. an underground theater at right. the time. Yes. And uh, by Jean Jean, I think there's an allusion to jeans and t shirts. There's That's not, right. it's no frills. Mm. And they did the entire repertoire. Right. Uh, 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 back in, in jeans. The, in jeans. Yes. In jeans. Yeah. Back in the 1670s. Uh, I was a, a student yeah. there. I was a student and I watched the Jan Jan series and I admire, I, I so kind of learned Shakespeare through Jan Jan Shakespeare. So were you, were you also an undergrad at uh, University of Tokyo? Mm -hmm. I, yeah. So you, there you were in college and you could go down to Shibuya, which is right. a very exactly. Uh, exactly. A youth culture and so mm -hmm. forth, and go mm -hmm. in and see this mm -hmm. avant-garde theater. And mm -hmm. it must have had an, a great influence on you to see this avant-garde mm -hmm. form mm -hmm. taking place. Mm -hmm. uh, and you were, I think at that time, if I've gotten the, if my translation of your credentials are right. You were studying with a famous professor at some point in the University of Tokyo, I believe, or maybe it was Cambridge, but you feel that felt at one point of your career that you had to move away from your training by that professor and move and, and decide what you wanted to do, I think, in one of your interviews. Well, I, I break free. Well, there, there are several famous professors that I yeah. have known. <laughs> Could you specify? I, I, don't, I don't know which one. Ah, you, okay. you, made, you didn't specify. You said you, were, you had to break, break free of your teaching. Uh -huh. uh, but it had to do not as much with Shakespeare as with Beckett. Uh -huh. It was the professor who... Takahashi. Uh, professor I think Ta it's Takahashi. Takahashi son. He, yes. he had Beckett on his, on his deathbed. Yeah, That's, right. Yes. yes. Okay. He's uh, been my father in law. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yes. What, what great inspiration. Oh, that's and, wonderful. He was well, also the vice president of the World Shakespearean uh, Association. So he, he knew both Beckett and Shakespeare. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, you should. You should. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, when I went to your production, I, was, I got a pretty good seat on the second row. Mm -hmm. And a couple came down mm -hmm. and... Uh, they obviously, of course, I, th I think married couple, they were a little older, and I, I'm certain they wanted to sit together, and there was mm -hmm. an empty seat beside me, so I gave my seat to the couple, uh -huh. you know, because how I'm kind, I, I've learned how to be polite living. Yes. In Japan. <laughs> That's and, how uh, you live in Japan. <laughs> yeah, I, I was never, I, yeah, I was never polite before I came to Japan. No. <laughs> And, the, and I went to the front row, which there were slightly lower seats uh, and a little yeah. harder. Uh. And I want to relate this to an experience I had years ago. It was it would have been 1978. And I went to a production on Tottenham Court Road in mm -hmm. London mm -hmm. uh, of a this place that looked like it was about to be condemned as a building, you know, just torn down. Mm -hmm. And we went into this theater mm -hmm. and it was Samuel Beckett mm -hmm. directing the San Quentin Players. Uh -huh. And I was a 20, 21 year old boy who, uh -huh. uh, you know, really didn't know what I was seeing. Uh -huh. uh, but famously, Beckett got released for life prisoners at San Quentin. They, they, uh -huh. he, uh, he allowed he got them to allow these people who were in prison for life to get out and do plays with him. And 
th those were the guys they did not waiting for Godot, but in game and mm. crap's last tape. And there was a point in that production. I'd seen a, a, a good production of Endgame before, and it was done in a jocular, and you do this too, a jocular, um, playful so, sort of way. Mm -hmm. you, you can do Beckett that way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the San Quentin players did not. Mm -hmm. And uh, I believe it's, uh, it's a ham and clove. And mm -hmm. there's a speech that uh, one of them makes and he's leaning on his legs. And I remember the pain mm -hmm. in my own legs. Uh -huh. uh, it's like it was transferring, you know, because mm -hmm. you could just see the despair in this actor's face, uh -huh. right? Having, and it's just nothing, you, you never forget it. And so I was at your, <laughs> at your production and I was sitting ah, down and you know, you the, oh shitty, <laughs> I'm, you got the I'm pain not as young, I'm not 20 years old anymore. Mm -hmm. And I was feeling a little bit of pain. pain and I said, harder. yeah, this is, this is perfect. You should feel some pain. <laughs> <laughs> the actors were so good. Oh, yeah. and, and of course there's some pathos. There's a lot of pathos in that production. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the Lear scenes, I remember mm -hmm. in particular, you know, mm -hmm. the Edgar and blind Lear, but it flows through all of these scenes that uh, you, you have to be kind of quick to, mm -hmm. to, uh, to figure. And you are waiting, you, you are waiting to waiting. see. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, and I think you did. Did you do a production of that a couple of years ago? Is that was this a revival? This is a revival. Yes. Yeah, uh, yes. because this is a part of a multi-volume series called the Kauai Project. I should have said right, that. Yeah, at the beginning. Yes. That, the, this is the sixth production. And uh, yes, before this, I have uh, translated in, uh, Beckett's Waiting for Godot, and I've produced that in the same theater. And uh, I thought I knew what the play is about. And because uh, Professor Takahashi is the, the expert and uh, I have traveled with Professor Takahashi to the Dublin and see the original production there. And I think I knew what the play is all about. But when I translated that and uh, produced that, uh, it was so difficult because uh, it, it's going circles all the time and uh, the, the, the actors always loses the place where they are they 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 kind of repeat the same lines again and again and we have to check what's the happening in the play now now at the end of the rehearsal i figured that i figured that the theme of this play waiting for godot is the death they are waiting for death and uh so Based on that understanding, I produced this waiting for will, and will also signifies the will and testament, yeah, which also yeah. signifies death. Yeah. 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 So, so that's how the two old Shakespearean actors are spending the rest of their life waiting for something. Yeah, I should add that these are older actors. Yes, yes. And so they carried the, I guess the word is gravitas, but the, mm -hmm. you, you can see, and they carried that with them. You know, the, mm -hmm. the, the these men, a, a kind of understanding. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a Japanese element in that, you know, if you think of um, uh, uh, Oi uh, Kinzabura mm -hmm. uh, and the, the um, in, you know, famous um, uh, Soseki, uh, you know, the famously kind of melancholic theme mm -hmm. that runs in Japanese mm -hmm. let literature. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. also like the cherry blossoms uh, scattering around and losing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, and uh, yes. mm. oh, that was wonderful. Well, in that series, you have done uh, several things. You, I think you started, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, you started mm -hmm. with Much Ado. Much Ado About uh, in, Nothing, yes. In that's 2014. It, yeah. And you it. innovated that. You mm -hmm. had the audience in the center, I believe, if I read the description correctly. Right, yes. yes. And they were surrounded by the actors who exactly, then integrated exactly. with the audience. Mm -hmm. Sort of an immersive yeah, theater, which yeah. is now popular. And uh, it's very, very simple. Uh, we, I just scattered uh, the the audience seats uh, around the on the stage, so yes. that the actors and the audience will be mixed together. Oh, and wow. sometimes there's the actors will step behind the audience to sneak, uh, and so forth. Uh, and then 
I think you followed that with mm -hmm. the uh, with Comedy of Errors, I think uh, that's on the 2016. Yes, it was uh, Comedy of Errors too. Comedy of Errors, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And also the Waiting for Godot in the same yeah. In yeah, the... these are interesting selections uh, from you. In Comedy of Errors, uh, you went uh, on that to. Um, much uh, much more uh, levitated, much a comic, and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, according to the description I read, oh, thank you. and you do something I'm going to we'll talk about later. You uh, attempted to bring the spirit of rhyme mm -hmm. from the English into the Japanese language, mm -hmm. right? In that mm -hmm. production, and make it more enjoyable for children mm -hmm. and adults, of course, mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and so it continues, and mm. so. What do we have to look forward to next with the Kauai project? Uh, there, I think there's another performance of Waiting for Will coming yes, up. Yes, that will yeah. be performed next year as well, and it will be brought to Sibiu International Theatre Festival. But we haven't been told when it will be held in next year. Yeah. So we're, we're just uh, uh, make, sending mails to make sure when, when we have to make sure uh, the flights and so forth. And uh, we are trying to figure out. But I think perhaps it will be in June or early July. Oh, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, one thing good about having a Beckett play is you only have two actors you have to get scheduled for instead of 16 or that's in exactly. one of your plays, you had a lot of actors. Right. Uh, that, yeah. Yes. Like, like, as you like it, but which is done in 2018, there were lots of actors there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, you know, anybody who hears this or is watching, uh, if they have a chance to see one of these productions, they're so, you know, they're for, they're, they're sophisticated. I mean, you have to kind of go mm -hmm. in with some background knowledge of Shakespeare and Beckett and theater, mm -hmm. you know, the history mm -hmm. of, mm -hmm. of uh, particularly uh, theater of the absurd and the uh, modernist mm -hmm. movement, that sort of thing. Sure. Uh, but there are a lot of people, there are a lot of us out there who are, um, are fans, fans, uh, uh, more so than maybe participants, but uh, uh, as actors or directors. Now, uh, and our audience should know that you you, you do translate, but mm -hmm. then, you, then you write. And when you're translating that gap between English and Japanese or any Western language and Japanese, basically what you're doing is writing. You're, you're yeah. having to rewrite, right. try to capture the spirit. That's exactly, exactly. Yeah, so exactly. as a, uh, you have a translation theory that is different from what I was taught when I was studying under uh, a great professor who uh -huh. had translated the Odyssey. Odyssey. Uh -huh. uh, and I won't say his name because it, he, he eventually went mad, like in Shakespeare. Mm. Uh, and I, I called him at home once. I had a question because he had mm. good days. Mm. And uh, his wife said, well, you know, he's just mad today. He, and he, wow. she used that word, and wow. that's an old word. Mm. Uh, but uh, and he's not crazy like Lear on the Heath, but he, mm. I think he, he may have suffered from. I, I talked to another classicist. He said anybody who translates the Odyssey, it could drive you mad trying oh, to dear. translate the Odyssey. Oh, so I'm worried. I'm worried. <laughs> I want to make sure that you're in good health, uh, because yeah. in your translations theory, he told us our class mm -hmm. that you have to just at one point let go. And you don't let go. You said you, you want to lose nothing in translation. Mm, mm, mm. Nothing is lost. Well, that's my hope. That's, that's the, the goal. But practically, it is impossible to, to grasp everything because the language is different. Languages are different. But uh, I'd like to express what was expressed in the original text. Yes. Uh, and you you work in one of your interviews, you talked about staying up at night. It keeps you up at night because you start thinking about, uh -huh. and I think it had to do with specifically um, the uh, to be or not to be. Uh, uh -huh. Uh -huh. The, uh, and I think your translation has become the standard. Well, it's it's back way around. around. I mean, my translation to be or not to be, ikiru beki ka, shinu beki ka, was there before I have done it. I mean, it was all the Japanese people knew this phrase, ikiru beki ka, shinu beki ka. Yes. 
And but curiously, this hasn't been printed in a book. And you know, so, so I checked all the records. I went to the national libraries and checked everything that I because I, I was convinced that there must be some translator who has done this because everybody knew that's the famous phrase in Japanese for to be or not to be. So, sort of internal rhyme in that yes uh -huh. yeah. but nobody has done it <laughs> so, I, so I thought I will be the first to put it into my translation I was thinking of other different expressions to put uh, translate that to be or not to be uh, or or something like that. But uh, because this phrase is so famous and nobody has used it in her or his translation, I think somebody should have used, used that translation. So they just didn't use it. But you, mm. uh, well, we, we should first say for our international mm. audience that mm. there is no to be verb in uh, Japanese. That is the first problem. That's the first <laughs> Shori, problem. Shori wa mondai da. <laughs> it is a, That's uh, the problem. The, the, the problem That's with the question. Yeah. yeah the um, great Germanic uh, term sure. of a design of being and right. Heidegger and all of this stuff that. Uh, no, no verb for be exact yeah. existence. So we have to translate that into to live or to die or so forth. Yeah, uh, the professor Odajima has translated into uh, to be to to be continue or not to continue. Yeah, yeah, oh, that's that's good too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, there, well, I think you collected at one point uh, over forty possible translations. Yes, I uh, researched the other uh, translations, and there are more than forty different versions of. 40 different Japanese versions of to be or not to be. And I put that into my book at the end of my Hamlet. So <laughs> you can enjoy the different translations for that single line to be or not to be. Well, with your permission, I'd like to show that image. Yes. Uh, yeah. But those, there, can, they, there can, they are. Can, there they are. All of yes. the translations. Yes. Wow. I, I, these are the, the 40 different Japanese versions of to be or not to be. That single line is translated in in so many ways yeah so it yeah. also shows that there are more than 40 versions of shakespearean translations in japan <laughs> so you can yeah. you, you can choose one from those 40 more than 40 versions well your career in some ways and i'm looking at this reminds me of an old book now uh, called the anxiety of influence by the yale critic harold bloom oh. uh, that we when i first started in graduate school was a big deal book about mm. uh poets uh for instance if you follow milton mm. you have to try to overcome milton or you have to find your own direction that isn't you know kind of in that large space that Milton represents. Mm -hmm. So if you're Walt Whitman in America, or if you're uh, Tennyson in England, mm -hmm. you know, you, you have these things that uh, drive you. All mm -hmm. right. So, you know, there you have, uh, of course, the, the, uh, the great professors that you studied under and how mm -hmm. influential mm -hmm. they were, mm -hmm. but then these great translators uh, mm -hmm. who have done their own, in their own way, right. fabulous translations that, mm -hmm. You know, you have to enter this field, mm. and uh, and and you have, uh, but it it, it must uh, it must feel uh, daunting at some point. Yes, it is daunting. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, the, the fortunate for me is that I have the Odashima Sensei, who has done all the thirty-seven translation uh, plays into into Japanese, and also Matsuoka Sensei, who has recently completed her whole Shakespearean translations. Uh, and they are like my family. The Otashima Sensei is the friend of my father in law. And the Matsuoka san is, is kind of like my sister, elder sister. Yeah. So I learn from both father and sister and uh, the, the the little elder little little uh, a, a brother is now trying to imitate. Uh, what ha they have been doing, and uh, I kind of tr trying to 
find what can be added up. I mean, what they have left out. Like Odajima Sensei has translated the, all the meanings into yeah. Japanese. Yeah. And if you do that, the meanings, then they're because Japanese, Japanese have ma many syllables, like, like, like when you say toad, you can say it in, in one word, in one single syllable, toad, but that will be hiki ga eru. Yes. Uh, that would spend five syllables. Uh, uh -huh. In that way, Japanese would, it, Japanese translation should be, it cannot but uh, be a lengthy uh, expressions. So what I am now doing, trying to do is to, to shorten the Japanese expression so that it will correspond to mm. the, the sounds that is used in the original text. Mm. But that my previous uh, father and sister were uh, paying much attention to to the meanings, and so naturally their translation should be longer than the original English. So it's my I think it's my turn to 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 focus on the sounds, uh, not neglecting the meaning, of course, but should put more emphasis on the sound that would be would I think would uh, respond to or correspond to the original theatricality intended it by Shakespeare in the original text. Yeah, yeah. Well, I am so surprised to hear, you know, in, in I probably shouldn't say this, but in, in Shakespeare studies uh, in the West, uh, and I'm not finding this with the people I'm talking with, but there can be there's a lot of competition. Mm -hmm. And it can get kind of fierce uh, at certain times. People kind of want to guard their turf. And uh -huh. I've been on uh, mm -hmm. news, uh, you know, the, the old listserv emails that they used mm -hmm. to have. And things would get far, you know, we talk about now in social media and people trolling and being so, mm -hmm. but things would get, even some years ago, they would get very intense. Uh -huh. And that, that you feel that close to other people who have done the same thing mm -hmm. and, you uh, and attempted to climb the same mountain right. but using different uh, courses, and that mm -hmm. you feel as mm -hmm. their as close as family. Yeah, that they don't feel in competition with you, and you don't uh, feel in competition. Well, with them. there was that's a, extraordinary. That's, there's a very interesting anecdote. You know, Ninagawa Yukio, the famous director, known worldwide by producing Shakespeare series, and uh, well, he has passed away. But when he produced uh, Henry the Fourth and the Henry the Sixth, because they are in two parts and three parts, he wanted the play to mean, to to, to recompose it, re make make it into a, a single play. And uh, Matsuoka san has translated the plays, and uh, it was my turn to kind of. Uh, reshuffle, I mean, to, to combine the two parts into one single play and combine the three parts, three Henry the Six into two, two parts. Okay. And uh, Matsuka and I are on very, on very good on terms. I mean, we are very friendly and uh, she can ask several things for me to do uh, so that she can work much more easily and we, we corroborate very uh, efficiently. And then you know, I someone surprised. Well, yeah. you must be enemies to each other because you are doing the, you, you, you are both translators and now you're working so cordially. <laughs> How come? And that's, that's what you know, son said. Well, that's that, that I, I feel the same way, but in some ways, now that I think about it, you two share an experience that if you don't get along, there are not many people mm. in that family. You, you don't oh. have many people who have been in the same uh, mm. mental and emotional mm. uh, existential space. Mm. So mm. if you exclude each other, mm. uh, I guess it's sort of like the uh, ex uh, presidents in the United States. Ah. Sometimes people are surprised that say Bill Clinton and, and George Bush, uh, younger mm. George Bush get along just fine. Mm -hmm. 
even though they disagree completely about things, <laughs> right. right? They right. have to share that experience. Right. Uh, and that is far more important, perhaps, than mm, however mm, you have mm. competed in the um, political battlefield or right. the Shakespearean battlefield, exactly. whatever. Exactly. But I, I want to return just a moment to the okay. idea of condensing, making shorter, because it reminded me of the mm -hmm. same challenge in the 16th century of the early translators of the classics, mm -hmm. uh, say the Aeneid, which was in uh, dactylic hexameter, you know, it, it, mm. it, every mm. line in the Aeneid mm. goes like that. And they tried these long lines and Arthur Golding does a fabulous job in his translation of Ovid mm. of mm. using those long lines. But there were many examples of people who just failed dismally. Mm. And then that's when uh, the innovation of iambic pentameter came in. And you know, with the great example of Marlowe mm. and those, the, what Johnson call it the mighty line, mm. but that strong uh, 10 syllable, um, stressed, unstressed line that I put my students to sleep with every year <laughs> every, <laughs> by saying, you have to learn this and mm -hmm. I'm not going to let you, I don't care. You have to learn this and I'm going to test you. And <laughs> you, you have to know the dun, the dun, the dun, the dun, the dun, or okay. else you're not going to get Shakespeare. You're right. not going to exactly. get anything. Yes. I completely and, agree with you. Yes. And I, I'm so surprised, uh, Sensei, that that it's, J Japanese is such a syllabic language. It's based uh -huh. on syllables. It, you know, from a child, from your childhood, is you know, you learn your <laughs> syllables all the way through. Right. My, my daughter did. I, I remember her learning, you know, uh -huh. in school. Uh -huh. And yet, English syllables don't seem to be taught in secondary schools. Right. I have to use the words, even the word syllable. Mm. Uh, for a lot of my students, they're just, a, oh, English has syllables too. <laughs> and there, there are about 30 or 40% of them who are just fascinated. Oh. Once you break it down mm. to doing that, yeah. And if I had any suggestion for uh, revisions in Japanese English education, I would say teach people syllables oh, and good. accents mm. and uh, use uh, uh, Professor Kawai's example in his translations of Shakespeare, because you try as hard as you can mm. to get that m movement in the lines. Don't yes. You? Yeah. Yes. Uh, and also, uh, I have been trying to reproduce the rhymes as well uh, since uh, like like I have translated King Lear last year and uh, I have this is I think the 15th Shakespearean plays and when I translated Twelfth Night I suddenly decided that all the lines of the rhymes should be reproduced in Japanese as well in the beginning I I Kind of abandoned it, and uh, the the previous translators all abandoned rhymes in Japanese because we because Japanese do not usually have rhymes. If we do that, it will be kind of rap music, oh. and mm -hmm. and uh, the rap and the rhymes are different. But I in, in any way I tried to attempt it from uh, Twelfth Night onward. And now I make it a rule now to reproduce Shakespearean rhymes in Japanese, even if I will be condemned that that will be a rap. Uh -huh. Well, I don't think anyone's <laughs> gonna condemn you for trying to rhyme, <laughs> but it is more difficult. It, I, it maybe it may it's not more difficult as much as it is a little harder to separate from a sort of childlike feeling if you're rhyming mm -hmm, in Japanese, mm -hmm. perhaps. Yeah. And so if you, you, you two households, both alike in dignity. Mm -hmm. uh, right. uh, yeah, when you're trying to rhyme uh, something that would be like in a sonnet, mm -hmm. like the beginning of Romeo and Juliet, mm -hmm. uh, to, to, to gather that kind of momentum in Japanese would mm -hmm. be very difficult. Right and well, well beyond my understanding of the of the mm. language, but uh, I I just love it that you try to do it. I I just love the uh, um, the reaching, you know, right. the, the 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 reach, the effort, uh, right. be, because I just I think that it it models it is it models 
what those poets, not just Shakespeare, but those mm. many poets during the Shakespearean period were mm. trying to do. Uh, they were they were trying to well, like famously with Marlowe, Overreach is mm. that book Marlowe the Overreacher, the mm. character. But even the you know uh, that that uh, that sense of of never giving up. Uh, right. Uh, to being rather than not being. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yes. Well, I, there may be more here, but I'm kind of interested also in a Jinsei Gekijo no Tatsujin. Oh, I right. love that title. Right. And in English, uh, Shakespeare, Master of the Theater right. of Life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's a beautiful English translation and yes. An equally and even very exquisitely mm. condensed Japanese title. I, mm. I love that. Uh, with my, and, you know, I can't make any claims to uh, native speaking at all. I'm nowhere close, to, uh, but uh, or to the feeling you might get, you know, having spent a childhood when those words are put together like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'll tell you in English, they strike uh, a chord. You know the, mm. the mas master of the theater of life, mm. right? Uh, and so I in the interview is that's that's out now, is it out? Yes, it is. Yes, yes it because is. the yes. interview was coming out, ah, and uh, and I am it, behind. I am very behind in my book orders. Mm. I apologize. It's it's, it's on. Is there? Is it's out there. on it's, the shelf? Yes, yes. Okay. Yes. Well, everybody listening, get it. Buy it. <laughs> uh, the the recent book I have. Uh, done is this uh the anthology by the shakespearean society of japan uh this is uh new this is t this year and yeah. uh i have uh contributed a one chapter here shakespeare to no okan it's the the 60th anniversary of shakespearean society of japan and yeah. that's how this okan comes the 60th anniversary yeah okay yes yes uh, and yes and the, the the book that you mentioned uh the jinsei gekijo uh no tatsujin was all about shakespeare what shakespeare is and uh how how he lived and what was his what what, what was his uh aim in his theater and so forth so i just tried to kind of uh write a uh, very uh, kind of how do you say uh, an essay which is already digested and uh, uh, digested for the for the every reader so that they will know very easily the essence of Shakespeare. So, for instance, I have used uh, the uh, the idea of humanism. The idea of which Shakespeare almost always uses in, in his plays, and, and tried to uh, and to try to explain, for instance, how why he always tries to use fools, and so forth, and that will be connected with the humanism understanding and also the neo Platonism and so forth, and I try to to kind of uh, explain what's it hap what what is happening in Shakespearean plays. And that's the, the guest, guest of Shakespeare. I think. Yeah. Mm. Well, I, I was, uh, you know, it's, I'm from the American South. I say this, and it turns out in almost every conversation, but uh, the master might not be such a good word in the context of uh, the history of the American South and with the slave master relationship. Mm. Mm. And I probably, probably should let our uh, listeners and uh, viewers know that. Mm. Uh, in Japanese, uh, masta mm. uh, is is a far different kind of connotation. It has more mm. different kinds of connotations. It's like maestro. 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 That's right, which is, mm. yes. And also, uh, one of the years ago, I don't go anymore, but years ago in Kichijoji, there was mm. a izakaya mm. that I became kind of a member of. And mm. anyone, of course, in Japan understands that. It, mm. There's no official membership. But at some <laughs> point, you know you're a member, and I'm not sure. It's, uh, it's a mysterious thing. And uh, the owner is always a master. Mm. And if it's a woman, she's mama. Ah. It, you know, and uh, so everyone called him master. Uh -huh. so, and he was a maestro because... Uh, it was probably, you know how they go, it's like 12, maybe mm. you could get 14 people in there. Uh -huh. uh, 
and there were, it would be half empty some nights and someone would come by and say, may I sit down? He goes, mm. no, we're, we're full. We're mm. full. Ah. He would, he would look at their face and decide, right. Because every night he wanted the right people because mm. it was about orchestrating conversation that night, ah. people drinking, eating, having fun. And if you have one bad apple in there, it messes everything up. So he really directed his, that was his area. He oh. was the master. And so, yeah, maestro of right. the of the theater of life. And it was a sort of in that little izakaya. Mm. Uh, I miss it so much, you know, especially uh, yeah, uh, because it, it's everything that's yeah. good. It mm. really is. Well, not everything, but so much that is good mm. about uh, Japan, in mm. my view, being wow. an, an outsider coming in. Mm. One of your themes uh, oh. and still is uh, cultural adaptation. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, there, there's more than just, uh, we've talked a good bit about translation, but there's more than just language involved mm -hmm. in moving a, a Western, let's call it that. I, I'm not sure if we can identify precisely what Western is mm -hmm. any more than we can identify what Asian is. I get mm -hmm. irritated with people who, you know, Asia is a, a so much, you know, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, but moving uh, as the early Meiji uh, directors and actors did when they were first adapting uh, Shakespeare to the to the new new theater, mm. um, they uh, that that effort still is out there in mm. order to make something poignant mm. and and strike that you you have to do something with it that is probably not part of the original theme mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. that, uh, like I said, it sort of ties it in with the culture that you're in, in this mm -hmm. case, Japan. Mm -hmm. So yeah, any reflections on that? The, uh, the It's a very interesting topic. Uh, because uh, when you were involved in translation and also in ad adaptation as well, you sometimes uh, get confused uh, to to demarcate between the two. I mean, translation can be close to be to be an adaptation. And uh, I have adapted uh, Shakespearean plays into Bunraku and uh, Kyogen. And I have done into Kabuki. I was there, there was a, a, a chance, but I, I lost it. So I haven't done Kabuki Shakespeare, but I've done Bungraku and Kyogen. And uh, that was a very interesting experience because Bungraku has its own rigid frame. The Gida Yugushi has its own Japanese uh, rhythm and the sound, which is totally different from iambic pentameter. Yeah. But, but in order to express that in, in Bunraku, you have to modify it, you have to adapt it and make it something which sounds like Bunraku. And that was a very good experience. But when I worked with Kyogen, I have a very good friend of Kyogen performer, Masai Nomura. Uh, for him, I translated Hamlet in 2003. And that was the, my first experience of translation. And for him, I have adapted Richard III into Country Stealer, a Kyogen version of Shakespeare. Yeah. And because we, ha we have been working for such long years, I have translated Macbeth for him, and he kind of adapted into uh, a somewhat Kyogen-like in his style and uh, toured around a, all, all over the world. <laughs> Uh, make, making uh, a very simple Macbeth in a very simple Jap Japanese way of, exp uh, of production and uh, using only the five cast, Macbeth and Lady Macbeth and three witches. Three witches will perform all the other characters because they transform themselves and because they're witches. They will appear, watch the Macbeth and Mac Lady Macbeth want to see uh, they, they, they are so, so the, the King Duncan is not actually the King Duncan it's an illusion performed by the witch and so forth and in that way I and Mansai the Kyogen performer has been working in many ways and for such a long time so we kind of 
because because he is the Kyogen man and uh, I I am from Shakespeare uh we kind of uh tried to to negotiate each other so that sometimes we can land on a little bit more on the Kyogen side and sometimes on a little bit on more on Shakespeare side and that will be for instance there will there was uh the comedy of errors trans uh, transformed into Kyogen style and that was uh the Kyogen of errors well actually it was written by professor takahashi but uh i worked the subscript and so forth and uh, we worked together and in that way we kind of trying to figure out how we can express shakespeare uh as it is or in Kyogen way and uh, we have been attempt attempted uh, several things so far so it's it's very interesting to talk about adaptation and translation uh for instance uh when i translated when i adapted uh richard iii into uh the country stealer, the Kyogen version. Hmm. I first translated R Richard III as an, a translation and let Mansai read the script. And the Mansai asked me whether I have adapted it <laughs> instead of translating it to, to, uh, faithful to the original. Uh, the, I, I said, well, this is faithful to the original, this is the translation and not adaptation. But Mansai found some similarities, seems some found some similarities in Kyogen. And there are there are the puns and the the plays on, on word word plays and so forth, and that was shared with Kyogen as well. So that's interesting uh topic. And yeah. yes. Well, to kind of clear up a little bit, Kyogen style would um I, I think we're talking about the uh, the difference in uh, the amount of freedom that you might feel to adapt. Mm. Uh, and this this is very strong, I think. Now I'm make, I'm generalizing as a, a non-native about Japanese culture, but the tradition from Zayami mm -hmm. was to be absolutely precise. And there is this, uh, you see it in uh, Ninagawa. Mm -hmm. I mean, what I've been able to see, there's not much out there. We're going to talk about that in a second. But um, when you see a picture of Lady Macbeth with the mm -hmm. Utiwa, you know, the fan mm -hmm. placed right here, right? Mm -hmm. I, I suspect that if, if she's a centimeter off, mm -hmm. that he would say, no, uh -huh. it, it has to be there, right mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. absolute precision coming mm -hmm. from the no and kabuki mm -hmm. uh, and so when you get into a, a shakespeare play without all of the instructions that zayami uh, mm -hmm. zayami left and the lineage of those you know mm -hmm. many many great directors being absolutely precise and that is the art right mm -hmm. that is a large mm -hmm. part of the art mm -hmm. and you get into this kind of loose uh shakespeare that moves from heroic speech uh, to a bunch of guys in a basically a pub drunk uh <laughs> talking about you know a robbing right. someone right uh -huh. that kind of thing so uh yeah that, that you would be faced with exactly how free do you feel you can mm -hmm. move this mm -hmm in a cultural tradition where on one end you have people who would love the innovation on the other end there may be the uh the kibishi mm, uh, mm, type mm, who goes well wait you know i'm not yeah. sure if you're you know you're not sticking to the way of doing here right the right uh, right yeah, ho -ho. uh and you've moved between both of these mm -hmm. worlds mm -hmm. right and it's right I'd like to call it a fluid movement, but probably it's a little diff difficult to step uh, mm. from sea to shore back to right. sea. Exactly, uh, exactly. Yeah. Um, well, I noticed that, that in your early, uh, I, and I'm probably going back, and I, there's there's not a lot available, available but it, I know overlapping, if you were in Cambridge, during the period you were in, which I believe was the uh, 90s, mm -hmm. uh, there would have been an, an enormous amount of critical theory mm -hmm. that was being taught 
and you you have done that but you have shaped another type of career it seems to me mm -hmm. away from critical commentary uh, -huh. uh more into a world of active mm -hmm. doing of mm -hmm. of hands-on doing mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. right which mm -hmm. by the way is the japanese way oh really oh yeah oh yeah it's something <laughs> i noticed immediately mm -hmm. I, you know, when, when Michael yeah. Jackson, when Michael Jackson first did the moon dance, right? Mm -hmm. People like me, Americans and so forth. God, lay that guy is so talented. You know, mm -hmm. he was just so talented. Mm -hmm. I get to Japan and there are a bunch of kids out there, you know, young, mm -hmm. young guys mm -hmm. out there trying to do the moonwalk, you know, failing, <laughs> yes, <laughs> failing. Yes. but all night, you know, they, they will go uh, there and try and try and uh, try. Hey, you, and, you don't imitate yourself. No, we, we're, oh. we're not. Well, some people do, but yeah. not born imitators. You know, we kind of sit oh. and watch. And it's uh, oh, that's interesting. Ka karaoke is, is a, a oh. great example. You know, they sung the song, let's us try to sing the song. Yes. And yeah, sometimes you hear a country Western song that's easier oh. to sing, maybe. But, you know, when you get Lady Gaga or one of these oh. you know, uh, kind of you know, great popular singers who have this enormous range, you know, when you hear it, that I'm not going to make the range. I, I couldn't sing this song. Oh. But in, in Japan, there is that mimicry. Wow. That's, yes, mimicry. Yes, I yeah. think Japanese people are uh, so fond of uh, mimicry and they want to imitate things. Yeah. And they want to participate themselves. They want to do, them, do that themselves. That's yeah. interesting draw yes. it in yes. but i think that sort of defines a bit of your your you're not mimicking you're making something new but you're mm. in the, you're you're actively doing it mm. you, you're writing you're directing mm. you're translating mm. and it seems to me that you're going to continue doing this um uh, you know, we, we get on in years and we start yes. seeing retirement coming up and so <laughs> forth but okay. uh uh, it seems to me that you've developed a platform here that you can take well beyond uh, oh, any uh, the, 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 the classroom. But tell us what's coming up. What could we expect or what's in wow. your mind? I'm, I'm, I know you're not finished yet. I, I can just tell by, by looking at you that you still <laughs> have, have more. Yes. Well, my, well, actually, I am now translating the Somerset Mom and Edgar Allan Poe. <laughs> Somerset Mom. Somerset Mom, the wow. human bondage. That's a huge, uh, yeah, <laughs> novel. And uh, I have uh, translated uh, many short not tales by Edgar Allan Poe, and I'm now writing the 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 end piece. I mean, uh, the kind of the essay to 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 put on that at the end of that volume and also i'm trying to solve the mystery of the death of edgar Allan Poe. he died mysteriously at the age of 40 and uh, so i'm now doing a totally different thing <laughs> and uh you are. I, That's, yeah uh, and poe and anyone else are you translating anyone else uh right now or right right well no the, it, the edgar Allan Poe he, it, itself is so so huge so you have to yes. you have to spend a lot of research on that and i have i have done a lot of research recently on uh edgar lampo but also i'm teaching shakespeare in the university yes and i'm planning to translate uh the tempest for the next play and i also i have translated the, the two part of the henry the force and it will be up in the Shakespearean series by uh, Tai Shu Kan, with lots of notes on the right side and uh, the original text on the left side. And that will be edited. I think I have to check all the, the, the details and so forth. So, so there are lots of things going on at the same time. Uh, so I'm kind of... <laughs> <laughs> you, you're you're not stopping you have you have mm. much to go now the Kauai project in terms of playwriting and so forth do you think you're going to continue producing volumes in the future as a director as a playwright uh, i hope so but yeah. at, the, at the moment i haven't uh, haven't got the slightest idea of what i will do next that's so, <laughs> that's so good 
You know, it's sort of what strikes you. You know, what's, what strikes you as being the thing you want to do. Uh, because I was talking about getting getting older. One thing uh, that's great about getting older is you feel the freedom. Mm. Uh, you don't have to prove yourself in the profession. Exactly. You know, you, exactly. you do this. Uh, one of well, my, yeah, go ahead. Yes, yes. When you were young, you, you tried so much to try to prove that you, you're here. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, now you don't have to. Well, you, well, you have to. You have to, or you can't advance, really. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. uh, and and some of that is uh, is restrictive. You know that, that there have been many stories of uh, people who kind of failed in their careers because they uh, did not specialize enough. You know, they didn't make their, you know, they didn't claim what one play by Shakespeare and become the ex expert in that mm -hmm. one play or whatnot. Mm -hmm. Uh, but you're you're following after one of my favorite critics, Arthur Kinney, who's done so much work all over, and he's a you know in Shakespeare in Renaissance drama. And but if you look back at his career, he stopped at one point and wrote a book on William Faulkner. Oh, really? Yeah, that's and interesting. He just stopped and, and wrote a book on William Faulkner. Now that would almost uh, uh, and and other things. He was very very interested in American Southern literature. Mm. Uh, you know, it just caught his eye. Mm. And I, I wish there were more of this. Uh, mm. we, we tend to over specialize. Mm. And, uh, I'm so happy to hear, you know, of, of course, starting with the, the relationship between Shakespeare and Beckett. Uh, mm. You know, that's that's so fabulous. Do you look at any other, uh, say, avant garde dr uh, dramatists of the period uh, in that particular period? Or have any of them? Um, uh, Sean O'Casey, I mean, you were talking about Ireland, uh, I was wondering if, uh -huh. you know, uh, you know, Juno and the Peacock or whatnot. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Well, there are, there are lots of lots of plays and playwrights that should be, uh, that should be uh, more focused on. But I think in exhibition plays, I, I, because I have majored in exhibition play drama, uh, uh, because I spent so much time in Cambridge on, on that period, I think uh, we should wish uh, more, more should be known to the world um, of these recent plays. Uh, like, for instance, in Japan, uh, I think nobody knows anything, any other plays other than Shakespeare. But there was Christoph Marlowe, uh, John Fletcher, Middleton. And well, th there are lots and lots more to show to the, to the Japanese people. And uh, I think we should we, we can enjoy it them oh yeah well mm. i uh, years ago now mm. i uh was teaching and we had uh more graduate students than we do uh, mm. now but mm -hmm. uh we uh, uh you know i could expect uh, four or five students uh to come in to learn shakespeare and that's a good size for a class and uh one year i said you know i'm gonna go we're gonna do Marlowe, and we're gonna do webster we're gonna do uh Great. the uh, du du duchess of malfi and you know some really good stuff we'll do uh, maybe edward the second i had a good uh, old BBC film version oh. of, of um, Edward II uh, and uh, with um, uh, Ian McClellan. Oh, good. Uh, just hey, uh, outrageously good. Wow. I just, uh, I, I can't imagine anyone else playing Edward II mm -hmm. now, but mm -hmm. the, uh, and we're going to do some off Shakespeare. And I walked in and there was one student in the class mm -hmm. and she had to be there because she was my, directly my student. I was advising her thesis. Mm -hmm. So she had to she felt like she had to be in there. I said, right. where is everyone? And we lost, she goes, well, they wanted to take Shakespeare. Oh. I said, okay, tell them we'll do Othello. <laughs> All right, just tell them next, we'll start with Othello next week. We're going to start Othello next week. And five more people came the next week. Oh. And then I slipped uh, Edward II in. Uh, oh, good. 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 Yeah, But I had to lead with Othello oh. because they wanted to study Shakespeare. And some of them were in American because, lit. Mm, because they don't know anything yeah. else. They don't know. Uh, and yeah, uh, 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 yeah. and uh, there's a great uh, production that I had of uh, Duchess of Malfi. Oh. I usually just pick plays based on mm. uh, being able to have access to good film mm. uh, productions. Mm. And I am a little distressed, uh, and we'll kind of move toward closure here, but there's so much. Uh, excellent Shakespeare mm -hmm. activity, not mm -hmm. just in Tokyo, but throughout Japan. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's highly innovative uh, in various mm -hmm. and sundry ways. You know, there's the uh, Meiji University has a standing group, I believe, 
uh, and the other universities do too. Mm -hmm. And there are um, major big time productions that go on, but then there are also kind of community oriented productions that go on. What I've been a little bit distressed about is that there's uh, not enough filming of, you know, oh. so we can watch uh, these. Mm. And, uh, and there is a, a protectiveness, you know, mm -hmm. of, of mm -hmm. the Mm -hmm. of the original production and so forth mm -hmm. and i do wish there was i, I could see more all right it, yes. uh particularly during a, a pandemic when you know a lot larger right. yes we're yes. sort of at home yeah you can have, see you can see my king lear in the reading production on the website uh on the it's it's on uh the website of the uh artoni eru by the tokyoto artoni eru uh, I don't know how do you call that in, in English, but I'll, uh, I'll I'll find out very yeah. quickly. We have people who who know that uh, stuff around here. <laughs> uh, even if I don't, you know, the ability to 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 gain access mm. uh, like this uh, opportunity that you've afforded this series, mm. uh, because it's it's been frankly it's been a little bit hard to get some of my colleagues to come on in Japan because cool. there's a I think probably a, a inherent shyness and maybe. Mm -hmm you know, uh, that, uh, that you don't have, you, you, uh, uh are out there. Uh, <laughs> yes. So I want to end by talking a little bit about young, uh, 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 Shoichiro and, yes. uh, being a boy in school uh -huh. and going through, uh, much more for our international audience than mm -hmm. for our Japanese audience who all know, mm -hmm. the, know the story, mm -hmm. uh, their own story, but you, you can be made to, feel this way and throughout the world they're educated you know well you are going to you're you're good you're smart you do your homework uh your teachers say yeah he's one of the smart ones and you're you're you can be fashioned very quickly and very early on and this is very much the case in the U uk to to be something else uh, -huh. uh to be what um what the African-American writer, Jane uh, Ellison, Ralph Ellison mm -hmm. talked about, you know, being told all of his life what he should be uh -huh. and not being able to, uh, mm -hmm. to parse out, uh, to pull out what he wanted to be, who he mm -hmm. was. Mm -hmm. But apparently you did that at some point uh -huh. you said, I am, uh, even though I'm uh, a, a young man in school, I am Bungakabu, I'm, I'm in culture. Mm -hmm. That's a big step. Right, you step away from the sciences and the math and uh -huh. all of that. So, at what point did you sort of feel feel like you know I'm going to go the bunka direction? I see. Uh, well, that that's a very good good or interesting question because uh, actually I was not so good a student in in the university at Tokyo University. There is. Uh, the the Shingakuri Wake, which is is you you all the the other universities uh, when you enter the university you have to decide whether you are going to, which which study you are going to major in before entering that university. But the, the Tokyo University is different. They just uh, received all the students for the two years, and then through that two years they will just the right to choose their own uh direction according to their scores so when you get a good points you have the right to choose the your own direction now when i was uh in 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 the tokyo university in the the, the freshman i wasn't attending the classes at all i was doing an uh were participating in the activities by Waseda Shogekijo, the Waseda Little Theater. And I was employed, as I said, I was employed by the trans as a translator to help the International Theater Festival and so forth. And I was not attending the classes. <laughs> and uh, I was also uh, producing my own uh, little uh, theater. I was writing uh, at the Salome Genso, the Illusion of Salome, and I produced that and so forth. So I was kind of intrigued with the actual theater activities and uh, neglecting my studies. So at the end of this Shingakuri Wake, I find myself at the very bottom to choose my direction. And there was the only 
English department, which is where anybody can go, even the lowest level students can go. <laughs> so that's why I, ha I had to choose the English department. And when I get to the English department, I have to choose whether the uh, poems, the criticisms, or theater. And I was not, so because I was uh, immersed myself with the theater activities, I thought I have to choose theater. And when I decided I have to choose the English department and the theater, then naturally I think I, I have to choose Shakespeare. <laughs> That's how I turned it on Shakespeare. <laughs> Is there any point though when you after you chose Shakespeare and you began reading and you thought this this is okay, this, this mm. is the reason because I chose Shakespeare was because I thought I, because I thought I liked Shakespeare. Yeah. I when I was a high school student, I watched uh, uh, Olivia Hasse's uh, Juliet, yeah. Zephyrus Romeo and Juliet, and I thought, well, this is wonderful, and. Uh, as a high school student, I, I seem to have read much as you like it. The reason why I remember I was reading as you like it in the classroom of the high school is because my uh, one of my friends asked me what I was reading. And I said, well, this is not an erotic novel. And I showed him the title as you like it. And he said, "Well, that's an erotic novel, <laughs> as you like it." So, so, there is, yes. <laughs> so I remember it that I was reading that book in my high school days. So it seems it seems that I kind of naturally immersed myself. I, I must have read the the retold version because I was a, just a Japanese high school student. So I think I I cannot have read the original. So, but uh, in that in that way, I kind of gradually, <laughs> gradually uh, getting towards the Shakespeare. So, so, and and finally, I when I uh, studied for several years, I decided I I will have to study abroad. And when I decided to study abroad, I asked Professor Takahashi where I should go, and uh, well. If you are measuring in English literature, the Cambridge is the best place. And I, so I just decided to go there. And uh, so that's, that's, I think, changed my life. I think that changed quite a lot, yes, because yes. you yes. went through at Cambridge and, uh, and finished a, a PhD there. Yes, and, and MPhil and PhD. And finished have, one yes. in, yes, which, yes. Uh, you know, this, the University of Tokyo doesn't award PhDs very easily. They're still, even now, kind of Weimar in the, you know, uh, well, I, I, I do remember that it was it Jacques Derrida mm -hmm. or some great French critic who is sitting for his uh, defense of mm -hmm. his uh, uh, PhD thesis at the mm -hmm. age of 45. Oh, yes. And, um, and, uh, and then he does it. And then the next year, three books are out. Ah. And, you know, and bam, there are the, but mm -hmm. the, uh, there is this sort of in the French, I think in German, French also, but the German system, uh, not a, 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 a reluctance to mm -hmm. that degree, mm -hmm. even perhaps even more so than Cambridge. Ah. Uh, and so you, uh, you accomplished that. So you came back from your wandersome days as a, uh, as a young man in school and, and not serious student. I'm going to remember that when I have one, when one of my smart kids who doesn't come to class, mm. uh, I'm going to say, okay, let's see how smart this guy is. Maybe we can give him a, a little bit of a break. Actually, I've had students just like you, oh. and, uh, or not, not just like you, but in a sense that I'm going, this, this person is absolutely brilliant, mm -hmm. but I'm having to teach at a certain level, which is a high level, but mm -hmm. it's not high enough really, mm -hmm. or it's not something that's engaging. Mm -hmm. This guy wants to be out there. He mm. wants to be out there in the world mm. and, or she wants to be out there in the world. She's very involved. Mm. And I really don't discourage that. You know, if they can come in and get the minimal standard done. Mm. Um, mm. I remember when I first started teaching in Japan, uh, mm. at Hiroshima University, mm -hmm. one of the older fellows in there said, listen, mm. 
all of these kids had to study really hard in high school to get in here. You know, uh, they had to study and study. And we kind of think of the first two years as, you know, you don't have to. That's, that's a Japanese way. It's the Japanese way. Because, yeah. of course, in the American university, they just. Uh, mm. uh, but I think it's sometimes uh, that way at certain places, depending on where you are. Mm -hmm. I remember uh, I was so bad in high school mm -hmm. that uh, I did not. I managed to enter a good school. From, but with a music scholarship mm, oh good. Uh, yeah and uh, by the way i wanted to compliment you on the acoustic the acoustics of your uh, production that i attended okay. uh, which were fabulous uh yeah. and the, what you did in as a soundscape mm, uh, mm. i forgot to talk about that earlier uh but i was good in music and really? uh, terrible in everything else and i got a music scholarship because i was oh, a great a french horn player I could wow play. i was playing trombone Trombone. Yes. I love trombone. Mm. Love trombone. And I, I, you know, it needs to be revived mm. every, every year. Somebody has to, Tommy Dorsey, or was it Tommy or Jimmy who was the trombonist? I forgot. Mm. But uh, I just love that big band music mm -hmm. the uh, mm -hmm. and the trombone mm -hmm. and also in uh, New Orleans, uh, mm -hmm. jazz and even modern rock and roll, you, the trombone still comes in. Wonderful. Right. Yeah. Nobody asked for a French horn player. In a <laughs> yeah, horns band. are difficult. I mean, it's it's so difficult to play. And uh, the sound of horn is kind of not uh, steady. I mean, it's 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 so exquisite but not kind of doesn't go like bam. it's 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 one mm -hmm. and it's so difficult well you have to do it but yeah. i remember my father saying uh listen i'm so happy that you got into a good university you didn't do very well in high school and uh and so i'm, I'm glad you did and i don't really think that you're going to make it there because uh, they're going to expect a lot from you and mm -hmm. haven't really shown that you can do that. And, uh, I, but I will help you in any way I can. And uh, I want you to know if you, if, or when you fail mm -hmm. at university that you cannot come back and live with your mother and me. Mm -hmm. That's what he said. Mm -hmm. and he wasn't talking to me in a strict father way. He was talking to me man to man. Uh -huh. You don't, uh, you don't live here anymore. Uh -huh. And that's not very Japanese because a lot of students, of course, continue to live at home. And so mm, mm. Japan. in the States, in the ethos that I was in with my parents, no, you go off to college, mm. uh, but you're finding your own way in the world. Mm. And, uh, mm. he, and my father said, I'll talk to Mr. Hobbs uh, if you want me to. Mr. Hobbs uh, owned a gas stand. Mm. And uh, I, I imagined myself being at the gas stand working and my friends coming home from college. Mm. And so I went to college and I studied all day and all night. <laughs> I could barely. So I didn't have a chance. I'd already mm. been out in the world a little right. bit too much. Uh, so I didn't have the luxury when I first and second year. Mm. Uh, but it's a similar type of progress where mm. uh, in both our cases and in the cases of many other people that I've spoken with and people on this uh, Brian Reynolds at uh, UC Irvine, who also does his own theater and mm. has a play coming up, uh, was uh, almost failed out of high school and was oh. a motocross writer. Interesting. And somehow managed to get into Berkeley from uh, oh. uh, uh, something like that. So there are many interesting stories. Thank you for sharing. Well, thank you. Yours, you know, uh, you, well, babe. because, uh, uh, show you, you know, yes. the people kind of view. When you say Shakespeare professor at the University of Tokyo, mm. there's a kind of image of an ascot in a pipe and uh, <laughs> you know, the, the, something from. Well, the, I'm I'm wearing Hamlet. And you're wearing your Hamlet, Hamlet T-shirt. Yeah, and this, uh, is, this is done by uh, when the, uh, Simon Godwin came uh, to to Japan. This is the Simon Godwin's Hamlet Productions T-shirt. Oh, good. Yeah, love it. Oh, that's a collector's item. <laughs> that really yes. is. Yes. Well, uh, oh, I should mention that there's one thing that you wrote. Hamlet is fat. Hamlet is fat. Yes, yes. He's I, fat and scant of breath. And that's scant what, of breath. Yes, that's how, what how the Gertrude said. So he's fat. She said she's saying he's fat. Oh. And how to interpret this word fat? And uh, I went through all the data in Cambridge and uh, well, some explained that it is uh, out of condition and some says it is just perspiring and so forth. Yeah. It's, it's sweaty or so forth. Uh, but uh, the fat people are sweaty. 
but it is not the synonym. And yes, I, so I, my, my PhD thesis concludes that fat is fat. Fat is fat. Uh, yes, it is a mon point. It's well, the kanji you use, shibo, is that, am I right there? Shibo, yes, shibo, yes. yes so that yes. means fat. That means fat, yes. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it means it's a, he has a huge body. Yeah. It, in the French, un bon point, it's in the, in the good, good phase. Yeah. Uh, so well, he's an aristocrat. He doesn't, mm. he's not wanting for food. Mm. And uh, he, and I don't think that it's stigmatized. Fatness is stigmatized in that age. It might be a symbol of your aristocratic background. Right. Look at the Henry VIII. He has a huge body. He has yeah. the huge legs. And that's how men should look like. Look yeah. Like. So yeah. <laughs> we don't, we don't envision Hamlet as fat though. Yeah. 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 Maybe because of the history of Olivier and the others who oh, exactly involved, so it's cultural difference very in mm. shape. You know, the mm. classical mm. actors have mm. to be uh, in shape. Uh, well, th that's just absolutely wonderful. Well, I, if if you have anything you'd like to add, I would love to hear it. But uh, otherwise, yeah. I think mm. that we've gotten through. Yeah. Thank you. Agenda. Yes. But I would like you, to, if you could, to stay just uh, after we finish recording mm -hmm. uh, to mm -hmm. debrief just for a moment, and then I'll right. let you get back. I know that you're busy, busy, busy. Yeah. And uh, thank you. Uh, Sensei, thank you so much for thank joining you. us thank today. Thank you. It was it's just so a great enjoyable. pleasure. Yes, uh, I enjoyed people. it very much. Thank you. Yeah.